So I'm back home and I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty weird. For anyone who's clicking onto the channel for the first time, hi, my name is Laura and I spent the last four months backpacking across Europe and I thought it'd be a fun idea for me to unpack my bag in front of you and explain some things that I love that I brought and some things I'm not too happy about and then some things I had to purchase while I was there. So welcome to learning from my mistakes and yeah, let's unpack. So starting with the main star, something that I couldn't have survived without and that is my trusty backpack. I use the Osprey 40 litre Fairview backpack. It is carry-on size and I love it. It is so sturdy, like I've been pulling out of it for four months straight and not a budge on it. There's no rips, there's no tears, everything is perfect. The sips on it blow my mind. They like there were so many times where I was rushing to a train and I didn't have time to pack appropriately and I just shoved everything into my bag and ran and yeah, it it's literally perfect. So if you're in the market for a carry-on rucksack to bring backpacking, this is the ideal one for you. So let's open her up, okay? First of all, let's talk about these straps. These are so handy because you can put things in between that you don't want to put inside your bag just say like a towel if it's still a little bit wet and you don't want to smell things up i bought a tripod while i was away so you know that was perfect just to slide in there or my denim jacket i didn't want to put it in the bag but i didn't know if i'd get chilly on the trains or anything so it's just perfect to click on the outside and easy access they also work great for compression for anyone who watched my packing video, you might notice that the bag is slightly smaller than when I left, and that's because I learned a thing or two. So, let's open them up. On the top first, I originally packed a tote bag for myself, and then at one in the morning, just before my flight, I couldn't fit everything in the bag, and that is what I left behind. Don't leave a tote bag behind, it is so handy. You can put it on your shoulder, put anything you need. If you're going out at night, it's just so light, and you know, it just fits so much. You can use it for grocery shopping, put your washing in it, and then you can just use it to carry around town. So, tote bag, they're so light, I don't know why I decided that I needed to leave, but great addition to your backpack. These guys, my Tivas, I am so happy I brought these. I, when I first got them, I wasn't sure if they were 100% comfortable on me. They are the perfect shoe. The only downside to them is the horrible tan you get with them, but it outweighs it because they are just so comfortable. And I literally wore them all the time. I wore them over my runners or sneakers, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they're the best. I'm going to buy another pair. So if you're in the market for sandals, also recommend these. Next, this is something that I have to buy along the way. So if you are just starting to pack for your adventure, a bum bag or a fanny pack. Seriously, I'm so sad that I didn't have one of these to begin with. They're just so handy, so small. It, this one actually fits my camera in it as well, which is insane. Um, and yeah, I feel like I, I didn't know what I was missing until I had one. And now I can't imagine going traveling without one. So yeah, make sure you pack one of them. Next, microfiber towels. Okay, I would be lost without these. They're so small that they just fit perfectly. They dry so fast. And yes, I do think you need two. So I was a little bit like unsure whether I should bring two when I was packing. And I'm so glad I did because one I would use for like going to the beach or swimming in a lake or something like that. And then the other one I would use for showers. And then if one was dirty, I just always knew I had a clean one. And I just don't like to stump on my showers and, you know, cleaning myself with my showers. So these guys they're great honestly okay here's a regret that I have so this is my makeup bag look how big it is I actually my bag ripped over there and I had to buy this in Tiger but it's way too big it's actually heavy as well and just unnecessary so I really regret bringing the amount of makeup I did like I brought loads of makeup brushes and like makeup palettes and everything with me that it's just it's unnecessary and not needed um so if i was to go backpacking again i would bring a makeup bag of this size that's all i personally need when you're going backpacking and you're going on a night out usually those night outs aren't planned you know you meet someone in the social area or in your dorm and they're like hey we're going for a few drinks do you want to come and you're like yeah okay and you just go the way you are um so yeah I don't know I never was like oh just let me go back and put some makeup on so yeah big regret this is also this is my bobbin bag or my hair bag um I've no regrets bringing this it's actually 
it's even smaller than it looks like it condenses down but it just has hair ties in it and hair bands and clips and anything I might need to put my hair up because you have some crazy hair days when you're backpacking. This bad boy, you need it, a rain jacket. Yes, you might be going in the summer months, but it will still rain. And also it works as a great windbreaker. I did bring a denim, denim jacket with me. And also if you watched the packing video, I brought a white hoodie. It lasted like, I think 14 days, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. Um, but yeah, a rain jacket, it's perfect as a windbreaker as to shelter you from rain. And you can just carry it around in your little tote bag and perfect. Okay, flip flops. This is really up to the individual person. I remember having disputes with people in hostels whether they bring flip-flops to shower in. I'm one of those people that I will not walk around a hostel with no shoes on because I don't know what other people have on their feet. So flip-flops for me are a must. Now I will say, where, is, where are they gone? Now I will say you absolutely can shower in your Tiva. So if you have something like a sandal, you might necessarily need flip-flops. I went swimming in these and everything, but you know, I like having the flip-flops as well. They don't take up too much space in my bag. If I was looking for a space saver, I'd probably leave them at home, but at the moment they fit. My most used item in my backpack. First aid kit. Um, if you're anything like me and you like to go tumbling down mountains, not voluntarily, um, you need one of these. I fell multiple times on my trip and this saved me. So yeah, first aid kit, you can get them on Amazon pretty cheap. Like everything I mentioned here, the links are gonna be in the description down below so that you can buy them too. So just plasters, bandages, antihistamines, and um, paracetamol, you know, anything you can think of that you might need. Also, if you have the tendency to have health conditions and you need medicine, but it doesn't, you don't always flare up with them, bring it. For example, I have eczema. I have not had a flare up in years and while I was away I did. So that cost me a decent amount of money in the pharmacy um, when I could have just brought my cream with me anyway. So I wish I just brought it. You need it. First aid kit. They're small, they're cheap and they're handy. Okay, to bring packing cubes or not to bring packing cubes. I think that's kind of a debate that constantly goes on between the backpacking community. I would 100% say that you need packing cubes if you're gonna bring, especially such a small rucksack. It just keeps everything nice, neat, tidy, and you know, it saves a lot of space, especially these ones, they're by Gonex, and the sips are so sturdy on them, and they have compression. So this, is, this one's actually compressed at the moment. And then when you open it out, you know, you have a lot more space in there if you need. Um, I didn't originally use the compression on mine and I started using them halfway through my trip because as I said, when you're running to a train station at seven in the morning and you don't have time to pack your bags well, the compression comes in really well when you're trying to sit on your bag and push it closed. So packing cubes, I would definitely recommend. And if you're looking for particular ones, these ones are great. Again, link in the description down below. Okay. What kind of shoes do you need to bring with you backpacking? I didn't bring enough in my opinion. So I had these, I had my flip flops, I had my Tevas, and I had another pair of runner sneakers um, that didn't survive to the end of the trip. They were in pretty bad nick. And um, so I did, I got, I got rid of them on my last day. Um, and I ended up having to buy these while I was over there. I don't know if that's a me problem or like a general problem, but I get blisters pretty bad when I'm walking around. Now I do have a bad leg and I walk a little funny. It's not noticeable to other people, but you know, it's, it's noticeable to me. <laughs> and yeah, I just needed another pair of shoes so that I could prevent myself from getting blisters. If there's a bad blister in one area, hopefully the other shoe didn't rub in the same position. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend two pairs of shoes if you can fit them into your bag. All my stuff fit into my bag, which is great. I did have the tendency to tie my, my runners or my sneakers onto the outside. Pajamas! Um, I really think you only need one pair of pajamas, no matter how long you're going for. Odds are you're gonna pack for a week to 10 days and then just wash your clothes continuously and your pajamas are gonna be one of them. I do recommend bringing a pair of bicycle shorts and a t-shirt that you can wear on the days that these are being washed because you know, some hostels can't get them done the one day. They can wash them, but they can't dry them on the one day. Or you might have to go to a laundry mat and the laundry mat might close at a certain time. So I always have a backup pair of clothes that you can wear as pajamas, but one dedicated pair is all you really need. I also did bring a drawstring kind of backpack. 
um, and I used that a lot. It did break in my last week and I'm not surprised because I was shoving everything into it, but I used that to store my shampoos and conditioners and soaps. And it was so ideal because if I did have a leakage, it just meant that, you know, it, it was contained within that bag instead of spilling onto all my clothes. Okay, the things I was afraid that I would forget about, I put in here. Um, my regrets. So I brought these Beats headphones um, because I was worried that the trains were going to be like the plane and I find it really hard to edit or listen to things on the plane with earphones. I feel like I can't actually hear them and I have them on full volume. Um, so I brought these but that wasn't the case on the trains and I really regret bringing these because they just took up space. I didn't use them and there was really no need for them so they won't be coming on the next trip with me. Another regret for you. So this is you know, my sunglasses, obviously, but I regret not bringing a spare pair and um, because basically, you know, I lost my sunglasses all the time. And that's why in some of my videos, I have some groovy pairs. I remember having a pink pair that didn't look great on and then a white pair. And that was basically because I had to buy them in places that didn't have like regular shops. Like when I was in Lake Bled, the only option was a tourist shop to buy sunglasses and I have really sensitive eyes. So I needed to get them. So I wish I just brought like a pair or two that I knew I liked on my face. But anyway, that's just a tip for you. Bring at least two pairs of sunglasses. Okay, locks. Let's talk about locks. You obviously need a lock when you are going backpacking or just if you're going to be traveling for long periods of time in general, even if you're staying in hotels, just be able to lock your bag on trains or on planes, on buses. Um, and I originally bought these. Um, they're like cable tie locks and I regretted it the minute I got there because they actually don't work in a lot of lockers and I got two of them originally and one of them just locked and never reopened so that wasn't fun so then I ended up having to go on a shopping spree the minute I got to Dubrovnik which was my first stop to buy a new good old-fashioned lock um, and that was the first activity I did on my backpacking trip because I couldn't lock my locker um, and yeah this was like 70 cent so can't go wrong with the old-fashioned ones sometimes and that's all you need. Something you might not think of, earplugs. You know, if you're gonna be staying in hostels, you're gonna to have to deal with snores. And the best way to do that is block the noise out. And um, these ones are actually swimming earplugs. I cannot get my ears wet, which is a whole other story. So I have to wear these when I'm swimming. Um, and this is all I had and it worked to an extent, but if I was to go again, I would get the ones that mold into your ear so that you can fully block out the noise. Um, some hostels do give free earplugs, but they're not great. But anyway, they're an option if you don't have anything else. Okay, so this is actually a toothbrush cover and they are lifesavers because it just means that you can always pop, <laughs> just means you can always pop it over your toothbrush and it just keeps it nice, clean, hygienic, and yeah, they're perfect. Just make sure you dry your toothbrush beforehand, otherwise, yeah, you have a problem. And a battery saver, an emergency charger, if you will. These guys literally saved my life the whole time I'm away because it just means that my phone is constantly charged so I feel a lot safer when I have my phone. And yeah, you need it. You need it to get around, you need to use your trains, you need to use your buses, you need it for your booking confirmation. So yeah, emergency charger. This one is Anchor and I swear by it. Um, I did buy another one over there because some hostels do not have plugs beside the bed and that was a pain and I like to have my phone on me when I sleep. So yeah, it just, it, it was handy to have two and constantly have one charged. Next, I wanna talk about this. One of my favorite purchases on Amazon ever. And um, this is a plug that obviously I could just put my adapter. So I have the adapter down the end, pop that in. And then bam, it works in the European walls. Um, Ireland has different plug sockets to mainland Europe. So this is the Irish one. You'd always have to buy one that's suited to your country. Um, but it is perfect. It charges up to five devices at a time. And I've been shoving it in and out of my bag for four months and it still works perfectly. I've been using it at home since I got back and it's great. So yeah, if you're looking for an extension lead, I recommend this one. So good. These guys, this, the. <laughs> these guys this believe it or not is a lunchbox and um, basically it opens out like this lift off the lid and then voila this is the smaller one I did end up leaving my ones behind because you know I had used them continuously and they were a little bit grubby and um, but nonetheless I do not regret bringing them because they just compact so small 
and it really helps with budget because it means that you can bulk make your meals if you don't mind eating the same dinner three days in a row then you just pop in the leftovers in here and heat it up the next day so very cost effective way to go backpacking okay next let's go with my biggest regret of my whole packing um and a big valuable lesson that i learned i did not pack practically for this trip i decided to pack cute dresses you know things that i would look good in and photos and pictures and i didn't pack things that i'd actually need and the thing is i didn't even like the clothes that i packed in the end because i was like oh i'm gonna have an open dress on the back but then i was like I don't like how my back looks in photos. So then I had three open back dresses and I couldn't wear any of them. So anyway, more of a story. Think practical, not pretty. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to talk you through the clothes that I did bring because I think this it is a big learning curve for me and I think hopefully it can help other people. Um, so I ended up buying these guys, the trousers that scream, I am a backpacker and I love them. They're so light and breezy. I could wear them on the trains. I could sit whatever way I wanted, not worrying if I looked like a lady or not. Um, and I wore these every single travel day. I got them in Zagreb, so a month into my trip and such, such good pair of trousers. So if you're looking for like something to wear on the trains and stuff, I recommend like a light pair like this. I then got this top to go with them and then I always wore my Chivas and that was my travel outfit. I even came home in <laughs> these clothes, which are not very Ireland-like, but I don't mind, they're great. Um, these are just a pair of gym leggings, can never go wrong with them. I definitely recommend bringing at least one pair. Okay, gym shorts. So I had one pair of black, just like cotton ones, one pair of black sports shorts, and then two lighter pairs that I could wear underneath dresses to stop chafing. Um, they are literally perfect. And you can also wear, these are the trousers that I wore as pajama bottoms when my pajamas were in the wash. So I recommend bringing at least two pairs of these. This is <laughs> the piece of clothing that made me realize that I had packed all wrong. I ended up living in this for the first month because it was a romper or a play suit, whatever you want to call them. So it's a pair of shorts, but kind of feels like a dress. And I use this one mostly for going to the beach or, you know, going to a lake swimming. Like I don't feel overly fashionable in it, but it's ideal. It covers my shoulders and it is perfect. And then a sports top, a little tank top and a t-shirt. You can never go wrong with a t-shirt again if you need to cover your shoulders and then if you're just having a lazy day, these guys are great to wear. So they're kind of my casual clothes that I have. And then I did originally have a system with my packing cubes, <laughs> but believe me, it didn't stay that way. I think it stayed like that for like a week and a half. And once I'd done like two loads of washing, they just end up going into anything. Now, this one is basically a whole new wardrobe that I ended up buying over there because I was not practical about my clothes choices. I learned very quickly that for me, rompers, play suits are the best way to go because it's, if they feel like dresses, but they have the shorts, so you don't get chafing in them. And, you know, I, I can climb a mountain with this on and not feel silly um, because it is a pair of shorts. So I ended up buying this is a backless dress. I end up keeping this one um, and I just used it for any nights out that I went on. Um, you know, but it's not very practical during the day, but it did the trick for at night. Um, another romper. Ooh la la. Um, this one I actually brought with me. I love this one. I'm wearing it in a lot of my videos. It's so nice, so cute, nice and girly. And it has shorts. Um, and then this one. So this is basically my whole wardrobe. Um, again, nice, frilly, light and shorts. And then I recommend you definitely get something black. The reason I say this, this is, again, you guessed it, a romper. Um, but it is completely black, which meant that on days that I couldn't do my washing and, you know, my clothes weren't clean and I needed to clean them in the sink, it's much easier to clean something that's dark or black than something that is light and white or cream, which we will again talk about in a few minutes. Um, and I did originally bring washing powder with me and I ran out of it throughout my trip and I didn't want to buy a big box just to take a small amount. So I ended up just using my shampoo to wash my clothes and my underwear. No shame here. You got to do what you got to do when you're backpacking. And on to my final regret is 
bringing a white clothing. I brought white t-shirts, white tank tops, a white jumper. Um, I regret it. I They end up lasting like two weeks. The reality is when you are backpacking for a long period of time, you're not washing your clothes the way you do at home and you're just throwing them all in together, hoping for the best. And the machines just do not get stains out like you can get them out at home. So yeah, I just, I don't know. Like it's just a big regret that I have. So more of the story, don't bring anything white. That's just my opinion, especially with sun cream. It makes them yellow and it's just not worth the hassle. So this is actually the end of the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you've learned from my mistakes or got a few tips for packing for long-term travel. Um, I know I am a little bit mixed up with the timelines. I'm still trying to edit the vlogs from my trip, but I thought these were nice, fun videos to put out now as well. So there's gonna be a little bit of a mix of my backpacking vlogs, tips for backpacking and then Irish travel as well mixed in there um, but yeah thank you so much for liking I really appreciate the support I got on this channel and yeah I'll see you in the next one bye